is are eligible. This is the first of two programs. Airtime is in proportion to the number of candidates fielded. The speakers representing their parties are Mr. Hing Sui Kiet from the People's Action Party, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok from the Progress Singapore Party, Mr. Pritam Singh from the Workers' Party, Dr. Chi Soon Juan from the Singapore Democratic Party, Mr. Michael Fang Amin from People's Voice, Mr. Spencer Ng from the National Solidarity Party, and Mr. Charles Yeo from the Reform Party. The party fielding the smallest number of candidates will appear first, the party fielding the largest number last. Speaking for the Reform Party is Mr. Charles Yeo. My fellow Singaporeans, I hope this broadcast finds you safe and well coming as it does in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are facing the worst economic crisis since independence. Many of you have lost your jobs or businesses already, and there will be more job losses to come. The government has dropped the ball on this one, but we can recover. Reform Party is fighting this election under the slogan, Build Back Better, Fairer. When we build our recovery, we face a choice. Continue as before with a system that works for an elite few, while the majority struggle or change and build back a Singapore that is better for all and fairer in every sense. Reform Party wants to see substantial government spending now to combat the immediate economic effects of the crisis, but also a lasting change in the economic model since independence. There should be an end to the cruel policy of austerity. We want vastly improved social safety nets, universal health care, cash payments to families, a senior's pension and a minimum wage. We can afford this. Our plans are costed. You can find the details and watch us discuss Manifesto live by video on our website reform.sg and our blue tick verified Facebook and Twitter pages. Standing for the honour to publicly serve Singaporeans is the highest patriotic duty. We show our love for Singapore best by holding the government to account through an efficient opposition in Parliament. Checks and balances from the opposition are a positive contribution. Mr. Kenneth J. Rednam is good with numbers and tenacious in pursuit of accountability, and he is equally diligent working through your problems at the individual and community level. All of our candidates bring skills that will make them good and dedicated constituency MPs. We will also be a safe pair of hands to manage your town council. This is the first election where you don't have to go out to vote. But if you want to see positive change, then it is imperative that you come out to vote. When voting is not compulsory, every single vote matters. On the 10th of July, take the first step in building back fairer, better, fairer. Vote for the Reform Party. Representing the National Solidarity Party is Mr. Spencer Ng. Good evening, fellow Singaporeans. Let me start by commending all Singaporeans for your resilience during these challenging times. Our country can move forward because of the spirit you possess. It is a spirit uniquely Singaporean. It is this resilient spirit which has always lifted our country through thick and thin. Recently, we have seen how COVID-19 has tested us socially, economically, and perhaps now politically. This general election is upon us now, and it is our responsibility to choose a government which has the ability to find solutions for the challenges we are facing, and at the same time, accountable to Singaporeans. This accountability cannot be achieved if PAP has the super majority in the parliament. No one is immune to mistakes. The opposition can offer perspectives which the PAP may miss out. This will reduce the benefit from hindsight statements and solutions may be then be more holistic and thoughtful. The National Solitary Party believes Singaporeans deserve a government which can hear everyone's voices. It should be a government where every Singaporean has a stake in it. It should be one which is consultative and seek the opinion of the people for all major decisions. Our party hopes that we can be the voices that have been given lesser thought. This is why we want to champion policies regarding labour, housing, population, retirement, and as well as cost of living for you in the parliament. These are extremely important policies because, firstly, we want a country which considers all Singaporeans first. We want a government that ensures our people have the priority for quality jobs. 
We have witnessed the large supply of foreigners flooding our country to compete for jobs. Consequently, it has depressed our wages. Secondly, we want to reduce the cost of living. One way is to make our housing affordable. HDB mission is to provide us with affordable homes of quality and value. But many of our young are caught in a mirror of housing debts. This has contributed to rising cost of living as a result. Is this what we want for our future generations? Thirdly, is the impending increase of GST necessary? GST is a regressive tax. It affects the poor and the working class much more than those in the upper class. To relieve the pressure of cost of living, we can start off with abolishing GST on basic necessities. Lastly, we want the government to honour our legal rights to withdraw our CPF at 55. Financial literacy for our retirees is the key to ensure they have adequate money to enjoy their hard-earned retirement. We do not believe in equal misery for all pertaining to a CPF. In conclusion, we want to build a government that can make decisions after considering all perspectives. A government that is diverse but fair to all Singaporeans. It is here I announce that the NSP team is ready and primed to work towards these goals. We implore you to consider our, cons our proposal tonight and do the next writing on 10th of July. Vote NSP. Thank you. Here is Mr. Michael Fang Amin from People's Voice. My fellow Singaporeans, these general elections are the most crucial in our nation's history since 1959 when PAP came into power. It presents the clearest choice our people have had in 61 years between a vision of a future where the rich become richer and that of the middle class and those who aspire to the middle class who are squeezed and being left behind. Singapore today is an example of a society where inequality abounds. The Prime Minister earns 2.2 million a year, while a cleaner may only earn slightly in excess of 14,000. In other words, the Prime Minister earns almost 152 times that of a cleaner. The income disparity between the elite and the privileged and the lowest income groups is obscene. People's Voice wants to deliver a fairer and prosperous society for many, and not just the privileged few. Over the years, no one has lived in Singapore can fail to recognise how the state has become ever more powerful and rich at the expense of the individual. Due to the PAP's disastrous immigration, housing, CPF, jobs and healthcare policies, the state has become richer, while the common man has become poorer. Many of you can relate to how you paid top prices for your HDB apartments on the promise by PAP leaders that the value of your property will never go down. But alas, you know those were false promises and Lawrence Wong has told you at the end of 99 years, your apartment is essentially worth zero and returns to the state. Many of you also rightfully feel aggrieved that the jobs that you are do previously doing are now being done by foreigners and that the standard of living of your family has plunged and you may even be in financial difficulties because you have lost your jobs. A government is like a father to its people and a father who provides for alien children while allowing the breakfast, lunch and dinner of his own children to be stolen is a bad father. People's Voice will always fight for Singaporeans to have the best paying jobs in our country. This is why we have advocated for a freeze of all S passes and a dramatic reduction in the number of E passes. There are many Singaporeans who are well qualified to do the jobs that are paid 2004 and above and are being deprived of doing them because these jobs are presently being done by foreigners. We need to regain our country, our dignity, our future by restoring the balance of power in favour of Singapore people. For people's voice, it will always be about putting people first and making Singaporeans our home again. On 10th of July, vote for the People's Voice Party to safeguard your interests and that of your next generation. Thank you. Speaking from the Singapore Democratic Party is Dr. Chi Soon Juan. Good evening, my fellow Singaporeans. In the last elections, Mr. Lee Shenlong asked voters to trust the PAP and promised that the government will work to lessen the burden of our cost of living. He has not kept his promise. He has increased our cost of living by raising water prices, town council fees, healthcare costs, electricity rates, bus fares, school fees, you name it. Soon he will raise the GST. He has brought in even more foreign workers to compete with us for our jobs. The future for Singaporeans, young and old, are looking increasingly bleak. Trust the PAP? Trust doesn't come from what you say, it comes from what you do. Worse, we were told that our prices of our flats would never fall. 
but now the PAP admits that our flats will decline in value until they become worthless at the end of the 99-year lease. The ministers have little to worry about. They leverage themselves with astronomical salaries. PM Lee collects about $200,000 a month. Even the junior entry-level ministers are paid $100,000 a month. How long do we average Singaporeans have to work to earn that amount? Now, the SDP is committed to changing all this by building a future of promise and hope for Singapore. We do this because we are committed to our beliefs. We, are we have drawn up an alternative vision for Singapore, crystallized in our four yes, one no campaign. Yes, number one, suspend the GST until end 2021. Yes, number two, introduce a retrenchment benefit scheme for retrenched workers. Yes, number three, provide a $500 monthly income for the elderly. Yes, number four, to put the people first. And the one no is to say no to a 10 million population. Now, due to time constraints, I can't go into detail about our proposals, but please tune into our speeches online on Facebook and YouTube, and we'll explain how we're going to push for these policies and how we're going to pay for them. Please join us then. Now, through the decades, the SDP has never wavered in our commitment to speak up for you. And to us, politics is not about self-glorification. Neither is it about enriching ourselves. Rather, it is about speaking up for you, our fellow citizens. And we do this by striving to be the kind of opposition that you've told us that you want. Competent, constructive and compassionate. A responsible opposition that does its homework. One that criticizes the PAP when it is warranted, but gives credit when credit is due. It is with this spirit that we continue to serve this country and serve it with pride and humility. It is in this spirit that we invite you, dear Singaporeans, to build a brighter and more hopeful tomorrow with us. Thank you and good night. Representing the Workers' Party is Mr. Pritam Singh. Good evening, fellow Singaporeans. As a responsible voter, you want your vote to count. How can you achieve that? The PAP will form the next government. That is a certainty. Even in 2011, when Singaporeans were openly unhappy, the PAP won 81 out of 87 seats, even though it won only 60% of the vote. If you live where the Workers' Party is contesting, the PAP does not need your vote to form government. But we need your votes. Amid COVID-19 fear, the PAP could end up with 100% of the elected seats in Parliament. And despite what the PAP may say, it does not need all elected seats to have the mandate to govern. Your vote for the Workers' Party will count in three ways. First, we will raise issues that PAP MPs cannot or will not raise. Since 2015, we have brought up topics in Parliament such as the GST test balloon, the Keppel offshore and marine scandal, and the constitutional amendment on the reserved presidential election, amongst many others. Not a single PAP MP filed a parliamentary question on the corruption disclosures at Keppel Offshore and Marine. Only Workers' Party MPs did. As for the GST, we pressed the government to reveal its expenditure and revenue projections before making Singaporeans pay more. We have highlighted issues on the governance of Singapore and the financial burdens on Singaporeans. By discussing governance, we help you to keep the government accountable. By raising bread and butter issues, we remind the government of the things that it may forget or ignore. Second, your vote for the Workers' Party will prompt other sincere and capable people to come forward in future elections to contest for the Workers' Party. These new and diverse voices need your encouragement. Your vote shows our party stalwarts and volunteers that their efforts at parliamentary research, meet the people sessions, house visits and food distribution are recognised. Your vote will bring in new volunteers and candidates. Third, having rational, responsible and respectable Workers' Party MPs in Parliament will help safeguard our country. Our nation needs protection against complete dominance of Parliament by one party. 
which could allow a tiny number of people to control everything. Our long-term dream is for Singapore to have a healthy democracy where there are two or three parties who could form a competent and honest government. We have seen from the experiences of other countries that power can fall into the wrong hands. The PAP is not immune to such a risk. PAP self-checking can fail. If the wrong people show their true colours only after reaching our highest offices, Singapore is finished. The true safeguards for the people of Singapore are strong political, economic, civic and community institutions that do not favour any party. We need such safeguards. The Workers' Party cannot form the next government. We are contesting fewer than one quarter of the seats. We are presenting the best candidates we can find. These candidates could have pursued a much easier path by joining the PAP or simply staying out of politics. But they have taken this far more challenging path because they love our country. To sum up, your vote for the Workers' Party is a vote for a contrast of voices and the questioning of the PAP when needed. It is a vote to encourage new blood to contest in future elections. Finally, a vote for us is a vote for checks and balances to safeguard Singapore for coming generations. We must not be an aristocracy where power is held by the few. We must be a democracy where power is in the hands of the many. Make your vote count. Speaking for the Progress Singapore Party is Dr Tan Cheng Bok. Dear Singaporeans, I'm Dr Tan Cheng Bok. I was an MP for Air Raja for 26 years before I stepped down in 2006. This year, I lead my party, the Progress Singapore Party, to contest this GE. I'm here to appeal for your votes. I am 80 years old. Yet, why am I contesting in this GE? Because the PAP is not the same as before. It has lost its way. And I love this country, like many of you. While I'm still able, I want to do something about it. So I've chosen to run again and pass on my knowledge to my younger colleagues. Firstly, I want to assure you that the PSP will know how to look after your constituency. PSP has people who have run town councils before you, including myself. I was previously the chairman of the Jurong East Town Council and Southwest CDC. We know how to take care of you. Secondly, if you put us into parliament, you will have MPs who will ask the tough questions on your behalf. Ask yourselves, have you ever heard of your PAP MPs ask hard questions? As a Singaporean, you have a right to information that the government is refusing to answer. For example, on our reserves. The government needs to be transparent and accountable to the people. Thirdly, if you put us into parliament, we can stop the PAP from having a majority of more than two-thirds in parliament. If the PAP has a two-third majority, they will have the power to change important laws, like the constitution at will whenever they wish, without being checked. Also, having a PAP monopoly in Parliament is not a formula for success. For the past 20 years, the PAP had a strong monopoly. However, prosperity has not flowed to all Singaporeans. Many PMETs are still out of work and the jobs are displaced by foreigners. The previous mandate did not always mean good outcomes for Singaporeans. Finally, if you put us into parliament, we will be there to check how the next government will spend our reserves over the next five years. The PAP will tell you that they can own self, check own self. Do you agree? This is very important. The government will be spending billions of our reserves on post-COVID-19 recovery measures. This is your money. If the PAP dominates parliament, 
tell me who will check how the money is spent. How much of our reserves will go to the big government-linked businesses paying high executive salaries? How much will reach ordinary Singaporean families struggling to get by? My dear Singaporeans, this election is really only about one thing, the post-COVID-19 recovery of Singapore. The world has changed dramatically. The PAP policies made before COVID-19 no longer apply today. Before Parliament was dissolved, you saw how the PAP government struggled to find the right answers. You saw how their boasting in January failed to prepare Singapore for the explosion of dormitory cases in April. They do not have all the answers. For years, you have heard the PAP say that they can't do it without them. You can't do it without them. I want you to know that you can do it. We can do it together. So I ask you this. Will you take this opportunity to say to the PAP, no more blank checks. Vote for transparency. Vote for accountability. And vote for independence. Vote for the Progress Singapore Party into Parliament. You deserve better for country, for people. Thank you. Here is Mr. Hing Sui Kiat from the People's Action Party. My fellow Singaporeans, good evening. Next week, we will head to the polls. This election will be like no other. Our lives, our jobs, and the future of Singapore are at stake. The PAP is seeking a clear mandate to lead Singapore through the storms ahead. Five years ago, under very different circumstances, you gave the PAP your mandate to take Singapore beyond SG50. We delivered what we promised. We have begun transforming our economy to create good, fulfilling jobs for our people. We invested more in education, especially preschools, so that every child can have a good start in life, fulfill their fullest potential, and have good jobs when they grow up. We launched the Skills Future Movement, for we believe all Singaporeans must be able to improve their lives at every stage of their career. We strengthened support to uplift lower income workers, improved access to good, affordable health care, cared for our seniors with additional support for the Medeca and Pioneer generations, and continue to encourage strong families and social cohesion. We fixed the train problems. Our MRT services are now among the most reliable in the world. And we have kept alive that fundamental promise that every working Singaporean household will be able to own your own home. Together, we built on the progress of those who came before us, united by a shared vision of a fair and just society. Today, COVID-19 presents us with profound uncertainties ahead. The pandemic threatens lives in many countries. It is unclear how bad it can get. The economic crisis has caused severe disruptions with no end in sight. In some countries, the pandemic has further divided people, even leading to riots and unrest. All these pressures have sharpened geopolitical tensions, making an already troubled world more volatile. As a small and open city-state, Singapore is highly exposed. Even though we have brought the number of new cases down and kept fatalities low, our battle against the virus is far from over. To safeguard jobs and livelihoods, we have to continue taking decisive action. And in a more fractious world, we have to do our best to stay relevant 
competitive and secure. We face severe challenges, not just over the next few months, but for many years to come. That is why we are calling the general election now. Our urgent priority over the next few years is to protect lives and save jobs. Through four budgets, we have injected almost $100 billion into this effort. We are supporting our healthcare professionals and frontline agencies to contain the virus. We are also providing wage subsidies to help businesses keep Singaporeans in their jobs. And we are creating many new jobs in both the public and private sectors for both fresh graduates as well as those who are seeking employment. For those who can't find a job immediately, we are setting up many new training opportunities to help you acquire skills and access better jobs in time to come. We are paying attention to workers in their 40s to 60s, as well as our senior workers through mid-career pathway programs and special hiring incentives. We are also providing special support for the self-employed, lower-wage workers and those with disabilities. For all families, we are providing the care and support package to help with daily cost of living. And for those hardest hit, we are providing extra support, such as through the COVID-19 support grant. Beyond the immediate future, we must continue investing in capabilities that can help us emerge stronger after this crisis. We'll step up efforts to transform and grow our economy, to make it more innovative and resilient, so as to create new opportunities for all Singaporeans. We must deepen our links with the world, work with like-minded partners to keep trade flowing and enable more of our businesses, including SMEs, to expand beyond our shores. At home, we'll promote new growth areas to create more good jobs for our people. In partnership with businesses and industry in the Emerging Stronger Task Force and working together to pilot new solutions through the Singapore Together Alliances for Action. To make sure that no Singaporeans will be left to walk alone, we will continue to build a more fair and just society. We will continue to invest in the education of our young with special support for those with greater needs. We will improve our social safety nets, working with partners to build communities of care across Singapore. And we'll give our seniors better support to retire comfortably and strengthen our healthcare system to care for an aging population. Taken together with our additional support for education, this will relieve pressure on sandwiched Singaporeans who are caring for both their children as well as their parents. We will never stop building our city into a better home. From local improvements to national projects, Singaporeans can look forward to a better quality of life and to a greener, more connected, more livable city. Finally, looking far ahead to 2100 and beyond, we are putting in place bold plans for us to live sustainably and protect Singapore against climate change and the rising sea. But just as at past turning points in our history, for plans to become reality, we need strong partnerships among Singaporeans and between our people and the government. This is what has given us an edge in this crisis so far. All segments of our society are stepping up. Our frontline workers, volunteers, community groups and businesses have all been working hard, taking care of our vulnerable and keeping our community going strong. We have shown what it means to be Singapore together. The PAP will strengthen this solidarity and bring every citizen on board. We have set up Singapore Together Action Networks to engage partners from different sectors to turn ideas 
into action. Your ideas, your passions, and your energies will be our strength. And with this strength, we'll emerge stronger as an economy, as a society, and as one people. We'll create a better future together. To work together effectively, we must all pull in the same direction. A strong and capable government will help us achieve this, even more so during a crisis. The PAP is up to this task. The PAP's leadership team is tested and proven. PM Lee and the older ministers have seen Singapore through many previous crises. Together with the 4G leaders, we have a leadership team that is ready to take on whatever lies ahead. And as in past elections, we have many promising new candidates to renew the bench and broaden the range of perspectives that we can draw on. This election will be tough. Singaporeans have been greatly affected by the pandemic and are anxious about their future. We will fight hard to deserve your vote in every SMC and every GRC for every vote represents a hope for the future. I ask for your strong support so that we can continue to work with you and serve you. Vote for the party that will secure our lives, our jobs, our future. Vote for the People's Action Party. Thank you.